Namaste. My name is Nina Rao and I'm really honored and happy to be here as part of the Dais Global Yoga Festival, which is part of the Learning Planet Festival 2022, celebrating the International Day of Education. So the practice that I'm going to share with you today is one of the limbs of yoga, which is Bhakti Yoga. And as a part of the expression of Bhakti Yoga, we'll be sharing a little bit of chanting together. I just want to say that, um, you know, my first exposure to chanting was with my grandfather in a little village in South India. And uh, I had lived abroad with my parents for many years and we would go back for holidays. And um, when I was about nine or ten years old, I saw a harmonium in my grandfather's home and I had always wanted to play an instrument and I never had a, the opportunity to learn. So I asked him to, to play the harmonium and he said, I'll play for you, but you'll have to sing along with me. So I had no idea what he was going to chant and it turns out he did um, a beautiful chant to Ganesha and without knowing what it meant, I knew that by repeating this name I was entering into the flow of this beautiful devotional space that was being created by the chanting of the divine names. For many years after that, I didn't chant. Uh, life kind of took over until I started chanting again when I moved to America. And I was doing a yoga class and my yoga teacher had invited Krishna Das, who some of you know, to come and chant as part of the retreat. And when I heard him chant, I was pulled back into that time of my early childhood where the names were conjuring up this very devotional, loving space that over the years has become a refuge for me, chanting the name. That was almost 30 years ago that I started chanting in America and I've been chanting ever since. And what I want to share with you today is what we call kirtan and maybe a little bit of bhajan as well. Some of you know who that, what that is. But what was apparent to me as an adult and starting to chant in my 30s was that I came here to the West to understand the roots of our chanting that came from India, which the seekers from the West went to find in the early 70s and 60s and brought back with them here. One of the great honors that I had of uh, learning this chanting practice again uh, when I was exposed to it in 1996 was to be able to go to Krishnadasa's Guru's temple, Neem Karoli Baba's temple in Kenchi in the Kumau Hills. And when I went there is where I met my Guru, Sri Siddhima, whose image you see here. And she was a great devotee of, of Maharaji, Neem Karoli Baba, took care of him for 40 years. And when he left the body, she was there for all his devotees. And she was the well that people went to to get those stories about Maharaji and relive and enter back into that space of love. For me, because I had never met Maharaji, my relationship only grew stronger with that great presence that I felt when I heard, when I heard the chanting. And I spent 20 years with her on and off, you know, when I could visit her. And she left the body in 2017. But the greatest gift that she gave me was not only her memory, but also the practice of chanting. She was very keen that we develop a regular practice and this was the way in which the inner knowledge was going to blossom from within us, was with the chanting, by taking the name in the Kali Yuga, by receiving the name, by chanting it and hearing it. We were going to open up our inner eye of our heart, let's say, where the knowledge becomes wisdom naturally. It's an intuition. 
and we learn to live our lives in a better way, in a good way, in a way with some peace and compassion and maybe not be so reactive with our negative thoughts and emotions that might arise, slowly, slowly. But at the very least, over time we know this will work, but at the very least, in this moment now, it creates a sanctuary or a refuge for us to go to. And Ma would say to us always, take whatever burden you may have, any complaint, any feeling of grief or anger or jealousy or anything that call it, causing you anxiety, take it to the altar where you offer your prayers. She was always prayerful in this way. And chanting these names is a way for us to offer our prayers. So let's do a little bit of chanting together. I will lead, and since I'm not going to actually be able to hear you, I will imagine your voices while you're singing back with me. And um, I will do some simple chants so it'll be easy for you to hear the words and be able to sing it back. Okay, and listen to your own voice. Listen to me and then listen to your own voice. And this is the practice. I'm going to open with a, an invocation to the Guru. And then we'll sing Sita Ra. Very simple. Let's start with some ohms together. Ganana antva ganapati gum hava mahe kavinka vinam pamashravastamam Jeshtarajam brahmanam brahmanas pata anashrun vannuti visi the sadhanam Maha ganapata enamaha Prano Devi Saraswati Vaje Bhir Vajini Vati Dinama Vitriavatu Ano Divo Brahata Parvatada Saraswati Yajatagantu Yagyam Havan Devi Jujushana Gratachi Shagma No Vacha Mushati Shranotu Vagdevye Namaha Satguru Deva Ram
Sita. Uh-huh. 
this chant is for Saraswati. Saraswati brings us clarity, discernment, and the stamina to practice. another name for the goddess Saraswati. She is the deity of my family temple, Sringeri Sharada Devi.
So the um, structure of this practice, as you can tell, is repeating. And the more we repeat, the more we're able to give ourselves to the practice by trying to bring awareness back to the mantra each time that we chant it. Because I'm sure you noticed as we were chanting, 
that, um, well, firstly, my voice went away for a moment, so thank you for bearing with that. But also, our minds are full of thoughts all the time. And what the practice aims to do is to bring us back to this moment where we might be here, be with the mantra, and absorb the merit of this practice. By doing regular practice, they say, that we do gain some merit, and we do also want to dedicate the merit of our practice for all beings to develop an open and compassionate heart as well. So, talking about compassion, um, I would like to chant a mantra that many of you might know. It's a long mantra. It's called the Hanuman Chalisa. It's 40 verses in praise of Hanuman, who is considered the wisest, the strongest, the bravest, and the kindest divine being. And we have many of those types of beings in India, as I'm sure you know from all the thousands of names that we can chant. But Hanuman has been the core of my practice, chanting the Hanuman Chalisa. Siddhima gave it to us as a practice, and she was very keen that we did this practice regularly, and we used it to fortify ourselves, you know, for whatever that was going to come to us in life, as a way to live our lives in the best way. And in all the years that I've done this practice, it has been that way for me, that it has become a refuge. And the more that I do it, the more I can open into it. And that gives me more faith to do it even more. So that's how practice works. You know, we start to see, you know, we don't have a, an exam sheet that's sort of telling us how we're doing. And we hopefully are not evaluating all the time but as we go through life, we start to see that we start dealing with things in a different way. We have the opportunity to maybe sit back a little bit and witness what's happening. Um, and when we do that, we can reduce our reactive behaviors that sometimes are detrimental to a situation and hurtful to people and hurtful to our own selves. Okay, so... Um, if you would like the words to this mantra, um, I'm sure you can find them in all kinds of places, but they are also on my website. And um, it's the Sri Hanuman Chalisa. Okay? So let's sing this together. And um, if you don't know the words, just kind of listen along. There's a lot of benefit to, listen to listening to chanting as well. And over time, once you have the words, you're going to be able to chant this by reading or even memorizing or both. It doesn't matter. You don't have to memorize it. But it's a beautiful prayer to enter into and um, of benefit to all of us. Let's just adjust this sound over here. So I'll sing um, a short invocation to Hanuman, and then we'll continue to invoke him. 40 verses in praise of Allah. Atulita Baladama Eva Shela Badeham Yanu Javana Krishanam Yanina Sakala guna nidanam Vanaranam adhesham 
रघुपति प्रिया भक्त बात जा जमन मुख रसुधार बरनो रघुवर विमल जसो जो दायक फलचार बुद्धहीन तनुजान के सुमेरो पवन बल बुद्धि विद्या देव हर जाधिराज कांडे मुज जने साजे शंकर सुवन केसरी नंद तेज प्रताप महाजगवंद विद्यावाण गुणी अति चातु राम सजीवन लखन जियाए श्री रघुवीर हर शिवर लाए रघुपति की नी बहुत बड़ाए तुम मम प्रिय भरत ही सम भय सहस बदन तुम रोज सगावे हस कही श्रीपति कंठ लगावे सनकादिक ब्रह्मादि मुनि स नारद शारद संहिता ही सम कुबेर दिग पाल जहांते कवि गोविद कह सके कहते तुम उपकार सुग्रीवन की न राम मिलाय राज पद दी तुमरो मंत्र विभीषण मान लंकेश्वर भय सब जग जान युग सहस्र योजन पर भानु नीलोता मधुर फल जान प्रभु मोद्र का मिले मुख माहि जल दिलांगी गय अचर जनाही दुर्गम काज जगत के जेते सुगमानु
चपता निरंतर मनुमत वीर संकट से हनुमान चुड़ावे मन क्रम भजन ध्यान जो लावे सब पर राम तपस्वी राज दिन के काज सकल तुम साज और मनोरथ जो को लावे सोए अमित जीवन फल पावे चारों युग प्रताप तुम्हार हे पर से जगत उजियार साधु संत के तुम रखवार असुर निखंडन राम दुलार अष्ट से दिनो निधि के दाता असबर दिन जान की माता राम रसायन तुम्हारे पास सदा रहो रघुपति के दास तुम्हारे भजन राम जी को पावे जनम जनम के दुख विसरा अंत काल रघुवर पुर जाए जहां जन्म हरि भक्त कमाए और देवता चेतन दर हनुमत से सर्व सुख कर संकट कटे मिटे सब पीर जो सुमिर कृपा कर गुरुदेव की नाय जो शत बार पाठ कर कोई चूट ही बंदी महासुख हो जो यह पड़े हनुमान चालीस होया सिद्धि साखी गौरी सुलसीदास सदा हृदय बसहु सुरभु सियावर राम चंद्र पद जय शरण मंगल मूरति मारुत नंद सकला मंगल मूल निखंड श्रीराम जय राम 
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. 